Are there advantages to aging? Yes, I am Debbie Jo Horton and welcome to Advantages to Aging. Join my guests and I as we discuss aging and what makes for a healthy lifestyle, which results in a quality life. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, listeners, boy, do I have a treat for you. With me today, I have Amber Ramey of Composure Self Care. She is an amazing massage therapist, but she's way more than that. So she also does integrative health coaching and practices out of Rhode Island. And I know oftentimes when she and I speak, we speak about stress because I know none of you have stress. So this ought to be a really boring topic. But tell me, Amber, what makes you so qualified to speak on stress? Oh, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm very happy to be on your podcast. Um, All right. So when I was a teenager, I experienced a lot of excessive stress symptoms around social anxiety. I remember most mornings, my mom driving me to school and having this really awful stomach ache even worse at social events and like Christmas parties. I actually have memories of staying home and writhing in pain on the couch, drinking tea and watching the Grinch by myself. That's like how I spent my holidays. So I ended up taking anxiety medication for many years until I was about 25. And I was in and out of therapy for many years. And I found out about a therapy called DBT and That was a gentle form of treatment that included really powerful coping strategies to interact with others. And it was that therapist who brought to my attention that I was stressing myself out consistently by how I was interacting with people. So they taught me to set more boundaries and some wonderful interpersonal effective communication skills. I learned box breathing. I learned how to calm my nervous system down to interact with others. And you know, life is a very long lesson, like a very long (laughs) lesson to me. There's always more I'm discovering about myself and how I am and how I grow. So when I was 30, I found out I was an empath. Have you ever heard of empaths? Yes, I happen to be one as well. So I totally understand stress being a constant companion in your life, especially when you don't realize that you're an empath. (laughs) And so for those of you who aren't familiar with the term, they're also called overly sensitive people. And in a really small nutshell, without going on a tangent, um, empaths take on the energy, the negative energy of others. Sometimes it's positive energy, but for the most part, in my experience, it's negative energy. And we do this indirectly, like we don't have control over it. So we're really sensitive to the energy around us and what others may or may not be carrying. Definitely adds additional stress to your life, especially (laughs) when you're not realizing that it's not your energy that you're feeling. It's somebody else's. And you try to figure out like, what is wrong with me? Why, why am I feeling this way? So with all that stress that you had for what, 30 years, what kind of toll did that take on your body? And, and those of us who deal with stress in maybe not as positive ways. What is it that that's happening to our bodies when we're in that kind of a stress mode? Oh, this is such a good question because understanding what happens inside us physiologically, I think is really empowering. And I share this with my clients all the time. So if like, if we're the metaphorical Humpty Dumpty falling off the wall, wouldn't we want to know why he fell so that the next time we could prevent him from falling and into a million pieces? (laughs) So this goes back to our ancestors fight or flight response. A lion is chasing a caveman, right? That's our scenario. That's our, that's our ancestral DNA coded in. This is how our body reacts. So the hypothalamus of our brain sets off an alarm system to the rest of our body. And through a combination of nerve and hormone signals, this system tells our adrenal glands to release a surge of hormones, including adrenaline and cortisol. I'm sure you guys have been accustomed to the term adrenaline, especially cortisol. That's a huge one. They're like almost buzzwords now. 
So adrenaline increases your heart rate, it elevates your blood pressure and it boosts your energy supplies. Whereas cortisol is that's the primary stress hormone and it increases the, I think the key note is that it increases sugar in your bloodstream. So your body is ready to use this energy to run away from your lion, right? right? They also both curb functions that would be harmful in a fight or flight scenario. So it suppresses our immune systems, suppresses our digestive system, our reproductive, and even our growth processes. So, okay, the lion's gone. You've used up all of your blood sugar that in that moment, your hormone levels are returning to normal. You're like hanging out back in your cave with your mom and your baby. And as these hormone levels drop, so do your heart rate, your blood pressure, every, all of your other systems are allowed to, to resume their regular activities. But when our stressors are always present, when our lions, like our everyday normal now modern day lions, things like running late to work, maybe traffic, things that are out of our control, right? So maybe you've gotten some really bad news. There's been a, a lot of really crappy news in the media lately that we that it's out of our control. Things like that, if those are constantly overexposed to us, our stress hormones are disrupting our body's processes and this is putting at us at risk and we're developing things like anxiety and depression and digestive issues, muscle tension and headaches, sleep problems, weight gain, memory and concentration impairment, long-term things like heart disease. Mm, yeah, definitely. And with the way that the world has been over the last two and a half to three years, I think just about everybody has probably been exposed to way more stress than than is necessary or was even usual. So if you don't necessarily deal with anxiety on a regular basis, just the fact that we've been living in a world full of things to be stressful about, a pandemic, a war, all those things that definitely can do a number on our bodies. But Amber, I know that you have lots of ways that we can help us cope with stress. So why don't you share those tips with our listeners? Okay, so I've organized this <laughs> because I have so many ways and I don't want to overwhelm and I and I want to be tasteful to everyone. I want to I want everyone to get a flavor. So my two main categories are stress management versus stress relief. So to me, stress management is a practice. It's what someone who is in constant fight or flight mode needs to practice daily until they can sort of turn off those hormones and feel more at rest, maybe just more like yourself again. So stress relief can be done more as needed. To me, stress is negative energy and it needs somewhere to go. So I seek activities to relieve, right? Sweating. I want to sweat that net, that energy out. Singing. You could literally get the words out of your mouth, maybe in an, in an emotional manner. Writing a letter or a poem, like the words that the energy is coming out of your hand. Creating art or dancing, things like you know self expression to get that energy out, whether it's positive or negative or antsy or whatever that energy is. Zumba. Oh my god, such a good stress relief. DJ, can you think of something that you use? I don't know. I think Zumba like would would in, would increase my stress. But I love oh, to really? dance. I love oh, okay. to sing. Um, it's funny, like songs can kind of come in and out of your life. And I remember, you know, back when it first got released, Uptown Funk just like was the song. And all of a sudden here we are several years later. And that's like my go-to. If I need to just like let go release some stress, or I haven't gotten all my exercise in for the day because I'm trying to make sure that I, you know, get at least a half an hour of exercise in. I'll throw that on because it's a four minute song and I can, you know, like dance to that. Like, how can you not dance to that? Right. Perfect. And so the stress just kind of goes out the window, at least for a little while until you have to pick up the phone and call that next person. <laughs> well, that's perfect. Like perfect way to insert some stress relief when you take it when you can get it right or right let it go when you can <laughs> I guess 
looking to take the important steps towards a slimmer, healthier you? We're here to help. Neora Fit combines a line of innovative dietary supplements that support your body around the clock with sustainable lifestyle habits that help you achieve and maintain your fitness and weight loss goals. We've spent years researching the right ingredients and technologies to help support a sustainable fit lifestyle. Not only are these products true to our promise of providing natural and clean formulations to provide you with scientifically backed results, but we've combined the product with a program based on the principles of the book, The Slight Edge, giving you healthy daily disciplines to help you compound your results over time. And we've also developed a support system to share fitness knowledge and encourage you every step of the way. Back to the show. Okay, now I want to talk about management, just stress management. So the biggest buzzword, buzzword I'm sure everyone is hearing these days as mindfulness. I feel like it gets thrown around so much, but I'm going to use my own umbrella term for it. So mind, mindfulness to me is an analysis tool, a practice that helps you understand where you feel tension or stress and how much you feel. And there's different, actually, I think there's levels of mindfulness. Like for example, someone who's advanced in mindfulness could tell you how much stress or tension they're holding on to. Like when I get one of those clients um, about that I'm about to massage and they're like, I can, I had this trauma recently that I'm holding stress in like my arm or something like that. I'm like, sweet. You are very aware of your body. Um, but an ad- added bonus of mindfulness is, and, and honestly, what I find the most valuable is this theory of gratitude. So there have been small studies that, uh, r- that gratitude helps lower cortisol levels in our bodies by about 23%. And For example, my morning alarm is labeled. I have it ask me what I am grateful for every morning and right when I wake up. And then I also have it ask me, what do you like about your body? So I've got two points and I'm promising myself a positive start to my day with those two questions. That's a great example of how we can change just the way that we even start our day, never mind where our mind goes. So often, like my son lives with me and his alarm goes, "Eh, eh, eh." it drives me crazy because I can (laughs) hear it. And I'm usually awake already, but I have something that's much more upbeat, like happy by um, Pharrell Williams. Is it Pharrell Williams that sings? Anyways. Oh yeah. It's that upbeat, like that's the way I want to get out of bed in the morning. I don't want to be aggravated the moment I open my eyes. Like why would anybody do that to themselves? Right? (laughs) Absolutely. You have, we have the technology, so let's use it to our advantage. That's perfect. Um, okay. So healthy diet. I feel like this goes without saying, I just wanted to touch on that. When we feel like garbage, we often want to eat like garbage. That's, I mean, that's how I feel when I, when I'm stressed, like if I'm stressed out, I kind of want to eat garbage. So these foods, they're high calorie, high fat, high sugar items. And they're so difficult to turn down when you're stressed because they provide that quick source of energy that the body needs when it's stressed and it's trying to prepare for that fight or flight, but they're just short-term relief. They're not, they're not helping you get to the source. If you were to focus more on your root cause, focus on relieving stress and foods that help you find balance in your body's hormones and kick on that rest and digest system, that's going to be what's the most helpful to you. And we all know we need to drink more water and eat more vegetables. So that's all I'm going to say on that because it's not my level of expertise anyway, but it's still important, right? Okay. Exercise perfect practice for the release, for the stress relief, right? You're sweating, you're releasing energy from your body, or you could be doing something like yoga that's facilitating your energetic channels to unblock them from negative energy. Sleep. This is another tangent that I won't go on, but (laughs) I have a lot to say on sleep. (laughs) So I'm going to simplify it. There's so much happening in our bodies when we're sleeping. These, there's chemical and physical processes that are restoring and nourishing and resetting our bodies for the next day. So if you're cutting yourself short from your seven to nine hours, this could have a strong impact on your ability to manage and cope with stress. So that's all I'll say about sleep. Journaling is another 
It could be a, either an analysis tool or a release strategy. You know, daily planning can show you how busy you are, or it can be a way to allow you to schedule in downtime. And it can also be a form of expression. You know, you might find it cathartic to release tension from your mind by writing something down. That's a great that, point too, because oftentimes if you're writing it down, you can release it from your mind, especially if there's a um, something that would trigger it either, you know, in your calendar or an alarm, which just kind of lets you let go of that and then move on to the next thing. These have been great tips and I am so glad that we had the opportunity to talk about not only, you know, like the fact that we all carry stress in our lives, but that we don't have to hold on to it. So I am so certain that you are going to have a lot of ideas and things that you want to share and questions you, you're going to want to ask Amber. So I want you to make sure that you think about what tips that she's given you're going to put into place. And then in the show notes is all her contact information. So as you think about all of the advantages to aging, don't forget that we have the opportunity to release the stress in our life. Thank you, Amber, for being a guest. This has been so informative. Thank you so much for having me. See, there are advantages to aging. What did you learn today that you could see yourself implementing? Share with me in my Facebook group, same name as this podcast, Advantages to Aging. All my guest information will be in the show notes. So thank you for joining me today and hit subscribe so that you don't miss all the tips to come in future episodes.